Hi guys, I'm at Bempton Cliffs uh, in Yorkshire and I'm at a mainland seabird colony and um, if you haven't been to a seabird colony and you're interested in wildlife and wildlife photography then you really should visit. It's an absolutely fantastic place to come to take wildlife pictures. So here um, it's a, around about mid-May and it's a great time to come. Uh, the seabirds will be here breeding on the cliffs uh, so they arrive here about April and then uh, they start building nests and then uh, towards the end of the summer, August time, they disappear back out to sea and the cliffs are quite quiet again. So any time during the summer is a fantastic time uh, to come and uh, photograph seabirds. And I quite like coming um, in uh, the early in the season, in May, because all the grasses on the, um, on the cliff edge are quite low. So that means you can get shots across the grass. Whereas uh, later on in the year, the grass is much higher but then you've got the option of maybe photographing chicks and stuff like that. So there's good times, there's good photography throughout the year uh, or throughout the season from April through to sort of, you know, uh, June, July, August time. Uh, but yes, if you haven't been to Seabird Colony, it's, it's just an experience. It's not just about the photography, it's about the noise and the movement. There are hundreds, of, thousands and thousands and thousands of seabirds. Uh, here we've got uh, kitty wakes, there's razorbills, there's guillemots, there's puffins, uh, there's, and the biggest uh, draw for uh, Bempton Cliffs is, are the gannets. And the gannets, they're a fantastic seabird. They've got about a five foot wingspan. They look absolutely strikingly beautiful and, uh, I, you know, I, I can't photograph them enough. They're absolutely superb. So what I thought I'd do in this video, because I've done quite a few uh, videos from Bempton Cliffs, is just talk a little bit about um, the approach you should take when you come to a seabird colony because there's so much going on and it's an unbelievable, fantastic experience. So first things first, I think it's uh, really important to get a whole range of pictures. So we want static shots where you've got, you know, all the different seabirds posing on the cliff edge. You want shots of them flying uh, past with the cliffs in the background, flights of them in the sky. So there's, you've got a whole variety of shots. If you can get close enough uh, with a big zoom, you know, come in really tight and then take some big, some other shots where you zoom out again and you've got the wider environment so that you show the cliffs and the sea and, uh, you know, the sky in the background. So you've got like an environmental shot of the seabirds. So you're showing their habitat. So we want the tight shots, you know, in close, uh, really sharp, but we also want those wider environmental shots to give us, you know, sort of a whole um, uh, sort of, a story about what's going on in these seabird colonies. So yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. I'm here for a few days um, and uh, what I should do throughout uh, this video, I'll uh, put some shots that I take. I'm going to look for getting lots of different stills, lots of video, hopefully some slow motion video and I'll sort of uh, put a lot of those shots and videos uh, on this um, on this vlog. So uh, yeah, it's absolutely superb. As I say, look for variety, uh, tight shots, wide shots, uh, when you're coming to uh, take the flight shots, um, I often quite, uh, I'm quite happy to use my zoom lens actually. So if you've watched a few of my videos, you'll know that I've got a, a prime lens, 600mm prime lens, and I've got this 200 to 500mm zoom. Now, I like the zoom here for two reasons. One, it gives me all those different framing uh, options, so from tight shots to uh, wider shots. Secondly, if I'm doing a lot of walking up and down the cliff edges, which I will be doing, it's not as heavy. And third, actually some of those flight shots are easier to get with this lighter lens. And uh, although the Prime, the 600mm Prime, is unbelievably great in terms of quality, it's got a wide maximum aperture, it's an f4 lens so it lets in lots of light, so it gives me a fast shutter speed. There are times when you miss shots because you can't move that 600mm fast enough. You know, when I'm panning, I can have this lens even fully extended, I'm looking here, and then I'm moving as I pan. So as that bird flies past, I can keep it in the viewfinder, pan and keep shooting. And that's the best way to shoot uh, a flight shot, obviously. You get, as soon as you've got the, um, the bird in the frame, you pan along with that bird. And it's a lot easier to do that with this lens, which is lighter. So there are times when a prime lens will get me shots that the zoom lens can't get, but there are also times when the smaller, lighter zoom lens will get me shots that I don't get with the prime lens because when I'm using my 600mm prime it's generally on a tripod with a gimbal head or a fluid head and you just haven't got, although you've got good ease of movement you haven't got as much ease of movement as if you're hand holding. So you know I wanted to sort of uh, start this video off with just 
talking about you know the approach you should take or we should take as photographers to a seabird colony and there may be the difference between shooting with a prime lens and a zoom lens especially a fast prime lens so I'll speak to you soon guys So what else do we need to think about uh, in, in terms of getting great uh, pictures from a seabird colony? So I've already talked about taking lots of different viewpoints from the wide angle uh, shot with um, you know, habitat being shown in the picture to taking close up images, taking static shots and then taking uh, shots of these birds in flight. I also think there's so many uh, photo opportunities in terms of behaviour when you're at a seabird colony. You'll have uh, things called beaking where the, the puffins in particular will click their beaks together and it's like that mating ritual that um, it reaffirms the, uh, the pair bond. Um, you'll see gannets and they cross their beaks and that looks fantastic. So there's all sorts of behaviour going on and that's the sort of things you also want to be capturing. It's a case of getting as much variety from a day's photography as you can from a place like this. And then when it comes to the technical side of photography, of course, for wildlife photography, the most important thing is the picture sharp and well exposed. So to get a sharp shot, a um, bit of a tongue twister, you need uh, to make sure that A, you've got a fast enough shutter speed to freeze the motion of that animal. And secondly, uh, the shutter speed is fast enough to avoid camera shake. And thirdly, obviously your focusing has got to be spot on. So when it comes to a shutter speed, if it's a bird in flight and the gannets um, are fairly uh, slow moving, they glide along uh, in the air, whereas the, uh, the puffins are much more uh, quickly, uh, they're much quicker when it comes to their flight patterns, the same as the guillemots and the razorbills, they're also quite quick. So for the gannets, I'd be happy with a thousandth of a second, whereas for the puffins, the guillemots and the razorbills, I'd want to be a bit quicker, a two thousandth of a second. So to be honest, if there's enough light, you might as well set a two thousandth of a second and stick with that because that'll be fast enough for the puffins, the race bills and the guillemots and it's also fast enough of course for, for the gannets. And then focusing, if it's a uh, static shot and just you know, standing on one of the cliff edges then that's not too hard is it? You can uh, leave it on a single AF or if you're a Canon user one shot, a single AF point and focus on the eye and that will be no problem at all. If they're flying then I tend to go for continuous focusing so that will be uh, AFC uh, for most, cam uh, most camera manufacturers or um, servo for if you're a Canon user. And then of course it would depend on the make and model of the camera. If I'm shooting with my Nikon and I've got the Z6 II here, I normally shoot if I'm doing sort of like a, a panning shot with a small group of AF points. Whereas if you've got something like the Canon um, R5, R6 or the Nikon Z9 or any uh, camera that's got uh, eye detect for birds, then that eye detect is a real game changer and it means you don't have to worry about uh, changing your focus points around that camera will just pick out the eye of the bird and it, it's just brilliant so if I had eye detect, bird eye detect on my Z6 II which unfortunately I haven't got then I'd be using that uh, but the key thing is when it comes to wildlife photography these pictures need to be sharp they need to be sharp in terms of um, the, a fast enough shutter speed as I say to freeze motion fast enough shutter speed to avoid camera shake and then our focusing needs to be spot on.
The other thing we really do need to take care of is exposure because we've got a mixture of birds here. The gannets are really white, so it means it's very, and the kitty wakes as well are really white. So it means it's a very easy chance to overexpose those birds. So firstly, I like to photograph these, um, these birds in particular uh, early morning, late in the afternoon when the sun is sort of low in the sky and the light is much softer, even though it's directional, it's softer, or even on a cloudy day that, that light is quite soft. And then the other birds we've got is, uh, we've got uh, guillemots and razorbills, and they've got white patches and really dark black parts uh, on their bodies for plumage. So again, that creates a problem for exposure. So you need to uh, make sure the exposure is right. And I tend to make sure the exposure is right for the highlights. So make sure I don't overexpose the highlights. And it's easier to do that with slightly softer light. And then I keep a good eye on my histogram to make sure I've got detail in the dark areas. Uh, the shadowed areas of the picture. So exposure is so, so, so important. Uh, keep an eye and make sure you've got your highlight detail, which is the bright parts of the image, and make sure you've got shadow detail, especially for things like the guillemots and the razorbills, because they've got great detail, but it can really easily block up and go completely dark, and you've got no detail in the dark parts of the bird, especially the eyes, they merge into the head. So you need to keep an eye on that as well. So that's um, really it for the moment. Um, I'm going to wander up and down for the next few days and hope to get loads of great uh, footage, loads of great stills, and uh, I'll put a load of those uh, on this video. But as I say, it's all about getting as much variety as you can. And then once you've got this, once you start thinking about these compositional uh, tools, you know, going for the wide shots or the, uh, and then the closer up shots, it's a case of making sure they're technically correct as well. Good exposure and uh, good focusing and no camera shake. And the other thing to look out for just before I finish off is unusual shots. So it'll be great in the background here, I don't know if you can see it, we've not only got the cliffs, but in the foreground, there's these lovely uh, pink uh, flowers. And I've got some great shots from previous uh, years here where I've got the, outer, the flowers as an outer focus, sort of lovely pink wash in the foreground and then you've got gannets in the background and I'll be trying to do that again this year. So it's a case of using sort of these options, you know, that sort of differential focus. So we've got a sharp gannet, out of focus foreground and it adds a bit of colour and a bit of interest. So it's all about variety. So look, um, yeah, that's about it for now guys and I will speak to you soon. I hope you found this um, video uh, interesting and useful. Um, the, you know, uh, what I want to do is to give you a few pointers in how to approach a photograph in a seabird colony. Because the thing is, there's so much going on. It's almost like an assault on the senses. There's birds everywhere. So I think to get the most out of a day uh, at a place like this, or a few days at a seabird colony, it's uh, really important to plan your shoot. Decide what you want to achieve in terms of action shots, you know, portraits, animal behaviour, plan the shoot out and I think that way you get a lot more out of it and you'll get the pictures you want and uh, the experience you want to take away from a day on the seabird colony. It is absolutely amazing. I can't wait to, for the next few days. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this. So yeah, um, as I say, if, you've, if you found this video useful and you found it interesting, if you can give it a thumbs up, a like, that would be brilliant. And if you haven't already, if you can consider subscribing, that would be brilliant. The more the merrier, building a, a hopefully a nice wildlife community of photographers here. And if you've got any comments about wildlife photography or uh, certainly seabird phot uh, photography, then drop them in the comments section below. So, yeah, bye for now, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you on my next video.